Hey, everybody, welcome to the Art of Relationship Show. I am, of course, your host, uh, Greg Dzinski, fully licensed professional counselor, relationship and sex specialist here in Michigan, uh, Metro Detroit area. Welcome to the Art of Relationship Show. Going to be jumping right into it about um, are you having goal-oriented sex or connected sex, okay? What is most important to you? And it's not a right or wrong, that type of thing. It's about what type of sex do you want? And if you are more focused on goal-oriented sex, and I'll get into that in a little bit, versus connecting with your partner or partners, if you're into that, <clears throat> you know, will it help you electrify your sex life if you more focus on connected sex or maybe you can have both and have enlighten your sex life that's what i'm all about trying to help people overcome you know affairs that type of aspect but also definitely with uh sex therapy and everything trying to kick it up and enlighten people's sex life as well trying to heighten all those elements okay you can join in uh live chat down below uh, throw your comments, your questions. I'd love to hear them from you and to be able to look at um, anything I can do to help your relationship, your marriage, that type of aspect, your dating life, to kick it up a lot and have it a lot more fulfilling for you and never about selling yourself out, okay? I never want people to do something they want to do. And talking about, you know, sex life, one person wants monogamy and the other one wants an open relationship, poly situation. Um, they want to be a swinger. <clears throat> that doesn't mean it works for everybody. That doesn't mean you sell yourself out. And then you have to look at decisions have to be made into what type of life you want to live. And a lot of people, you know, they can love their partner, but it's looking at what is the most important thing for you to not sell yourself out. So when it comes down to you know, selling yourself out and having an electric sex life. First, you have to look at what the hell does that mean, right? What does having a great, fulfilling sex life look for you? And I have people, you know, over the 20, 21 years I've been doing this, you know, you have people that want to have sex every day. And no, it's not always the man. It's a lot of women too. And the man wants sex. He's good, you know, maybe having sex once every four months, five months. And again, it's not a right or wrong. It's looking at what works for you as an individual and what works for a couple that's good enough for you. So going back into why I'm here today, right? <laughs> Talking about goal-directed sex or are you looking for connected sex and what do those mean to you? A lot of people are looking at, <clears throat> you know what, goal-directed meaning, you know what, I'm going to get my lady off. I want her to orgasm and that's all I'm focused on you know, giving pleasure. And believe me, I'm all about pleasing ladies. Okay. Um, I'm all about that. I want women to be pleased. I want men to be pleased. Absolutely. Is it going to happen? Let's be honest, right? Is it going to happen a hundred percent of the time? Chances are no, I'm a realist. Okay. And I want people to be able to look at, that's where a lot of people are looking at more, you know, goal directed. Oh, I made her orgasm five times, four times, 10 times, right? Uh, I made him come twice, um, that type of situation that you're more looking at the outcome, no pun intended, versus connecting and what that looks like to you. Now, a lot of people, when you talk about goal-directed sex, there is a difference between wanting to try new things versus, you know, it's just goal-directed or goal oriented. Okay. A lot of people might be in uh, Japanese rope bondage. They might be, you know, wanting to have a sex swing, try a different position. There's people that are in the group sex. They want the, you know, swingers and they want to try a new couple or poly situation. I don't judge, I don't bash, but that is different than, you know, say I'm goal directed and I'm only working on, you know, making sure you come or making sure I come that type of thing or a goal. So how many people are having sex and the goal is just to get it over with? That's not fulfilling for anybody, right? So I never want someone to sell themselves out to be in a situation where they are, let's face it, you know what? Sex is just obligation or being in a relationship. If we want to go to that sphere about, 
you know, I'm only in a relationship because I'm obligated. I don't want to hurt my kids. I, I, you know, what am I going to do financially? Ew, God, no. Or if you are, you know, same thing about sex, your goal is to just get it over with. You, why would you want to have sex? And why would your partner want to have sex with you if you are just, your goal for sex is just to have, you know, get it out of the way. It's a checkoff box, okay? So you look at, number one, what are your goals for sex? Again, this is not a right or wrong, that type of situation. You look at, is your goal to connect with your person? Is it to maybe try new experiences? And that's what I talked about at the beginning when I mentioned about trying a new thing. Uh, maybe you want to get into bondage, dominatrix. Maybe you want to try a kink thing, okay? This is different than goal directed that, you know what, I want to get it over with, or I'm going to, I want to make sure, and I'm going to do everything I can to make sure he comes or she comes instead of being connected for the experience. So you want to try new things, like I mentioned, for the experience to see if you like it, or it'd be cool, or at least it, it might not be for me, but you know what? It, I can say I tried it and it wasn't for me. It could be like butt sex, right? Anal sex, right? Some people maybe never tried oral sex, you know, again, not bashing those situations, but maybe it is, you know, you want to try it, see if you like it. And it's for the experience, not just a checkoff list. Some people will try things. I really don't want to do this, but it'll make her happy. It'll make him happy. You know, can you, even if you want to try it, you, can you imagine or think about the experience, meaning can it be a pleasurable experience versus that it's just a checkoff list and it's just, you know, an obligation. Oh, that way I can say I tried it and shut him up or I can keep her quiet because we did a certain act. So that's what I mean about being goal directed versus trying a new thing. And trying a new thing is not necessarily goal oriented. It is for the experience, right? Like a lot of people will go on a vacation, take a trip or try something new, painting with a twist or whatever your thing is, dance lessons, right? For the experience, for the enjoyment, to connect together. And are you able to look at your sexual experience and sex life as the same thing, right? And this goes, if you're single and you are just in the hookup game, okay? I'm not judging. This is for men, women, doesn't matter, right? Can you also look at the experience you're having and not just the goal, right? Oh, I just want to get a nut. I just want to come and then get the hell out of there. Can you also connect with that person, even if it is a one night stand on the emotional level, mental level, and enjoy each other on that way versus, oh, I'm just going to hit it and quit it. Eh, even a one night stand, you are experiencing some type of emotional, you're experiencing some type of, even a short-term relationship when you're having sex on a one night stand, a lot of people don't think of that or don't even believe that, but it's true. You are impacting one another, even if it's for a couple minutes. Okay. So think about that enjoyment and think about how you would like to experience that. Like I said, you can join in the live chat below. I'd love to hear your comments, your questions, throw them at me. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. So again, what is the difference between goal directed for you versus connective sex, right? How do you want sex? Even if you're trying new things, you're experiencing that together with your partner, right? Or maybe you want to try new things with, for yourself. Does maybe you want to try a new toy, new vibrator, new C ring, maybe, um, whatever, a uh, pocket P, you know what I'm talking about, pocket vagina. There we go. Are you able to, you know, see if you like it, you're trying it for the experience it, or are you just, you know, a goal check? Yeah, it's something to do. It's like me cutting the grass, taking the trash out. Nobody wants to look at sex that way. Okay. So nobody wants to get into that situation that you are enjoying it. And what would make your sex life more enjoyable and a lot of times I tell couples, and 
heard and researched and, you know, other researchers through Kinsey Institute and, you know, other sex therapists and stuff, uh, sex uh, educators and uh, researchers throughout the world, you know, about the number one thing that makes sex satisfying for most people is connective sex, right? It's sharing that experience that you are able to share each other, mind, body, and soul. So it's not just goal directed, but yes, we have to look at, you know, fulfillment. What is fulfillment? You can be emotionally connected, but the physical pleasure is not there, right? So what do you do to make it more physically pleasing? And a lot of people, oh, it doesn't matter if I if it's not physically pleasing for me, I'm going to tell those people they're either lying or never experienced maybe sexual pleasure that's been meaningful and fulfilling for them. Because most people want both. They want the physical pleasure and they want the emotional, mental connection pleasure as well. You know, are you connecting, looking at each other's eyes if you can? Even if you can't, depending on the positions you're in, right? You can't always look at each other's eyes, right? <laughs> so you are you able to still connect with that person the way you touch them, the way maybe you use your language, your voice, maybe the moans, the groans, that type of element. Um, so, oh, baby, I love this. I would ever. So there's different ways to connect. It could be through touch while you're having sex and not just penetrative sex, right? Do you, are you able to kiss? Is that a way to connect? I already mentioned eye to eye contact. So what is connective sex to you and with your partner? A lot of people, and I hear this all the time, um, to be able to look at those elements, to be able to look at, you know, what is going on and what does that mean to you? You know, Fulfillment, fiscal fulfillment, of course, most people want fiscal fulfillment from sex, but also to be able to look at, you know, connecting and what does it mean? And you hear this from, uh, you know, from a lot of women that um, I just feel like I'm just a piece of ass, Greg, you know what, I'm just something um, for him to get his rocks off. And that it's sad. It hurts. You know, it hurts me. It bothers me because I want people to be able to look at, you know, what is fulfilling for me and what is fulfilling for that person, that lady. And are you able to look at and explore that, right? A lot of times one night stand, you're not going to be able to get that depth. And that's where, you know, most of the most enjoyable, fulfilling sex is in long-term relationships because you're able to learn each other. You know each other on an emotional level, not just, you know, on a physical level, which is important. Me as Maria on Instagram, I appreciate you joining in. Uh, appreciate you. Again, any questions, any comments, you know, please throw them down below and to be able to look at those aspects. Um, we have another uh, listen that just mentioned. I don't know why but I am very shy. Um, you're not the only one. Okay. Not at all. Um, I want to feel comfortable enough to be able to communicate my needs and have a partner that is eager to please. And yes, explore. Awesome to you. So I, you know, looking at this Avenue, I want to look at, you know, what makes you shy? Number one, a lot of times it could be our own belief system about sex. What is sex that we're supposed to be timid and there's gender issues, right? About, you know, what is go oriented sex versus, oh, it's about the guy being pleased. I'm like, what? If you're with a guy that is only about him getting pleased, you're with the wrong partner. Okay. Or Hold on. Let me back up a little bit. You're either with the wrong partner or maybe you're not teaching him how to please you and fulfill you. And that's where, you know, the one viewer or listener mentioning about, you know, being shy. And a lot of people don't want to cause an argument. They don't want to hurt that guy or that lady's feelings of, hey, I'd love it like this. I'd love it like that. And when it comes to shy, we have to look at, you know, where does the shyness come from? Is it how we're raised about sex? You know, a lot of people old school weren't even raised about sex other than don't get her pregnant or don't get pregnant. Don't have sex until you get married, which I'll never promote. Okay. Just saying <laughs> I respect people's beliefs, but I'll never, 
I'll never promote um, waiting until you get married to have sex, okay? Um, so, uh, Ezra Bon, hello, I know I'm butchering your name, so I appreciate it. So, again, going back to the shyness about sex, where does it come from? You know, is it, it could be body image aspects. It could be insecurities about body image, our own beliefs about sex, uh, not being good enough, you know, the performance anxiety. And this cuts across, you know, men and women, you know, what happens if he doesn't get hard? It's my fault. What happens if she don't come? It's my fault. What happened, you know, all this aspect about if I, you know, being a man, I don't last long enough. Or what happens if I don't come and I'm worried about her, or how it affects her. We're in our head a lot. And that's where I want to try to calm that and look at where does the shyness come from? And is it shame? Is it about women shouldn't enjoy sex? Hell no. I want women to enjoy sex. Absolutely. I'm all about women being pleased emotionally, mentally, physically. You get me? Soulfully. I'm all about that. So first we have to look at where does the shyness come from? Where, where, what is the basis or foundation of it? Is it insecurities within our own self? And some people can be very confident, but when it comes to sex, they can be not so confident, lack of experience, or maybe the, you know, rape or trauma survivors, or they've been just harshly treated and demoralized and criticized. Oh, you don't know what you're doing. You're terrible after a one-time experience, and then it just, it stays with us, you know, and we start thinking, I don't want to do anything again because I'm terrible at it, instead of looking at, hey, you know what, that's one person's opinion, and what can I do, what can I do to educate myself about not only, you know, how I can be a great pleaser to my partner or future partner, what can I do to know about me, what do I like how do I want to be pleased? What pleases me? How do I want to be touched? Um, maybe talked to, maybe looked at, those type of aspects, okay? So I want to be able to look at those elements and where that shyness comes from and having a vision, you know, do you ever picture yourself envisioning, hey, if I wasn't shy, I'd be like this, okay? And there's some people that have, I call it a mind blindness um, where they can't picture anything in their head. It's rare, but there are people in this world that have that. They can't picture it. So outside of that, you know, are you able to look at, you know, even fantasize, hey, what would I be like? How would I act if I wasn't so shy sexually? And then you'd be able to go from there. And that's more about connecting. Is it more about, you know, performance anxiety or is it more, can you connect and learn? I'm all about both. I think you can have great connected sex physically and emotionally. That's what I promote. That's what I want for people. You can have great physical sex and not be connected, but that could be okay for you, right? But can you have, you know, the next time it could be connected and great physical sex, right? And sometimes you can have great connection and the sex is sort of like, eh, you know, um, oops, we're tired, whatever, but you still connect and you still feel the love or the care or the consideration for one another, right? About sharing each other's bodies. And it's not a right or wrong. I think a lot of people have a grandiose view of, you know, sex should be woohoo, toe curling all the time. That'd be great. And I'm all for that. But I think it's unrealistic. We're tired. We might not be feeling well. Um, but I want people to be able to say, hey, I'm tired. I'm not feeling that well. So I'm just not into it. Can we hold each other? Can we touch each other? Um, just, you know, hug, caressing, holding hands in bed, on the couch, holding each other. Those type of aspects are ways that you can connect on, you know, on that element. And there's a lot of people out there that are more, more goal-oriented, like I talked about when it comes to sex, it is about, you know, oh, I made her come or yeah, whatever. But you might have made her come, which is a physiological, biophysiological response. That doesn't mean she enjoyed it. That doesn't mean she felt connected. You get me? It's it's like a reflex. It's your body like uh, dogs drooling when they see food. 
that type of thing, okay? So that doesn't mean they connect. What's more important, okay, you made your partner come or that they felt connected and they felt close and they felt like um, you were into the whole experience or it was just goal-oriented, again, about just making that person come or whatever. So you have to look at, number one, again, what is connected sex to you, okay? And what is connected sex to your partner and versus, you know, it's just go oriented And how can you describe go oriented Oh, I just feel like you're just in a rush to make me come. I feel like you just want to get me off. And that's okay once in a while. Don't get me wrong. We're tired of quickie, that type of thing, uh, oral sex experience, great, whatever. I get that, okay? But we're talking all the time. We're talking more, more times than not. You know, what would you rather have? And a quickie, just getting your partner off, I promote that. But you don't want that all the time, okay? And it's more about you're excited to get them off. It, it's not about your own ego. It's not about your own pride. That's more goal-oriented versus you want to deliver pleasure. Sounds great, right? And what does connected pleasure look like for you? It's different for everybody, okay? So that's where I want you to look at about the experience and what does a connected experience sexually mean to you? And I want you to be able to talk about it with your partner or number one, within your own self. And what does that look like? Especially, you know, if we're shy, if we're just learning about our own sexuality and, you know, our sexual experiences, appetite, what we like, what we don't like, that's okay. We have to start somewhere don't be shy about that, okay? I say don't be shy, meaning it's okay to be shy, absolutely, or to be, you know, worried or concerned, but I want you to say, hey, you know what? I am shy and normalize it. It's okay. I don't want to be shy anymore. I don't want to be nervous anymore, but it's okay. There's a difference. It's not shaming yourself. It's being able to learn and grow, okay? <clears throat> and another thing, it's hard getting outside of your head. I, I think connection is huge. and Maybe I don't feel 100% connected. So I have a tendency to hold back. You bring, oh, you bring up so many great points. Oh, thank you. It, it's not easy, but it's very individualized and it's very subjective. And a lot of people are in, you know, we're in our own heads. Oh, please, like, you know, it could be me. Oh, please don't come. Please don't come yet. Please don't. And pfft, we come early, right? Or... Oh my God, I hope it gets hard. I hope I'm not, you know, uh, hope she don't think I'm hung like a gerbil, right? Um, that type of aspect. So we're all in our heads once in a while, but that's where I want us to focus on, you know, experiencing that other person, what that other person feels, how that person, you know, what we experience, the smells, the feeling, the touch feeling type of thing. Maybe the way each other smells, that type of aspect. Maybe how we sound, the verbals, the moans, the groans, connecting in the eye-to-eye -eye contact when possible. So those are things that we can get more in, in tune with about connecting with our partner. And not only that, connecting with our own self. A lot of people are afraid to get, you know, they can get naked, have sex, no big deal, no problem, right? Get naked, have sex, woo-hoo, but they're never emotionally connected. So always feeling like there's something missing. And they don't want to get connected because, let's face it, we could get hurt. We could get our hearts ripped out. We could get feeling used. That I get that. I don't want anybody to be used. I want you to be able to be, it's consensual, and to be able to look at, hey, I want to feel this connected. And if that part, person doesn't want to feel connected with me, um, then I want to be with someone that feels connected. Don't be ashamed of that and feel intent. Be very intentional with how you want to feel. And that doesn't mean your partner's going to feel the same or whatever. It's about now, I want to feel connected. And this is, I'm not going to be running away from it. I'm not going to be afraid to get my heart, you know, hurt. I'm not going to be afraid to be open and vulnerable. This is me and I'm going to be own it and be proud of how I want to feel. And it doesn't depend on everybody else. You get me? It sounds easy. But it takes work. It takes a lot of insight and to be able to look at how do you want to feel with your partner? How do you want to feel within yourself? Okay. So I appreciate everybody tuning in. Thank you very much to the Art of Relationships show. 
um, live every Wednesday or hopefully every Wednesday at 12 noon Eastern time. You can catch a show live. All the episodes, I have done a lot. You can catch all the recorded episodes on my website, theartofrelationships.org. And on the top, you just click on show. So you'll see all the previous uh, episodes on there. Um, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, all over the place. You can follow me. I'd appreciate it. I'm very flattered um, under Love Guru Greg. And everybody have a great day, great Wednesday, peace and love. Any questions, any show topics, please direct message me on Instagram, Facebook, anything I can do to help. I'm here to help you have the relationship you crave. And not only with a person, but with yourself, okay? So peace and love, and thank you so much, everybody. Everybody uh, take care. Bye-bye. Oh, where'd it go? Sorry, people. <laughs> there we go. Peace.